Hello and welcome to our lesson on Pascal's Triangle. So in this lesson, we're going to discover how to use Pascal's Triangle to help us expand brackets that have been raised to a power. So we'll begin with question one, where we have a plus b to the power of zero. Now anything to the power of zero is one. So it doesn't matter what a and b are, as soon as we raise it to the power of zero, it becomes one. And this is the top of our triangle. So we can say this one here is a plus b to the power of zero. So if we look at a plus b, this time to the power of one, well this will be one a plus one b. Now algebraically we wouldn't normally write the one in front of the letter, but for the sake of understanding Pascal's triangle we're going to. So we have one a plus one b is equal to a plus b to the power of 1. If we move on to question 3, we've got a plus b squared. Well, to work this out, we'll multiply a plus b by itself. We'll expand these brackets. So we have a squared plus a b plus another a b and then plus b squared. So we have 1a squared. We can collect these like terms. So we get 2ab and then 1b squared. And this fits perfectly into our third row of our triangle. We have 1a squared plus 2ab plus 1b squared. And this is a plus b to the power of 2. We'll move on to a plus b to the power of 3. So to work this out, we can multiply a plus b squared by a plus b to the power of 1. We've already worked this out as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So we'll put this in brackets and then we'll multiply it by a plus b. So now we have a cubed plus a squared b and then 2a squared b and then 2ab times b which is 2ab squared b squared times a b squared times b which is b cubed we can Kind of this up by collecting the like terms. So we have 1a cubed, 3a squared b's, 3ab squareds, and 1b cubed. And if we look at the fourth row of our triangle, we just fit it in nicely. We have 1a cubed plus 3 a squared b plus 3 a b squared and then plus 1 b cubed so our fourth row is the same as a plus b to the power of 3 so without expanding brackets do you want to try and use pascal's triangle to work out the expansion of a plus b to the power of 4 and then a plus b to the power of 5 you can pause the video and resume it when you're ready. Okay, so if we look for some patterns, we can see that as we go from left to right, we are decreasing the power of a by one every time. So, a to the two, a to the one, a to the zero. The three, two, one, and zero. And as we go from right to left, we're doing the same to the b times. So three, two, one, zero. So we can use the same pattern We've got a to the four, and this fits in because we've got a to the one, a to the two, a to the three, a to the four. So then a to the three, a squared, a, and then a to the zero, which is one. Going the other way, we've got b to the one, b to the two, b to the three, and then b to the four. So b to the three, b squared, b, and then b to the zero. And we can see that this works. 
because the matching powers always add up to our original power. So for instance, the three is a three. This two add the one is three. This one add two is a three. And we can see this works because three add the one makes a four. Two add two makes four. One add three and so on. So a plus b to the five is going to be one a to the five plus five a to the four b plus ten a cubed b squared plus ten a squared b cubed plus five a b to the four plus one lot of b to the five. So this is the beginnings of Pascal's triangle and now we're going to use this triangle to help us expand more complicated brackets. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so for question A, so we're going to use the fourth row of our triangle. We have one lot of the first term, which is the one, and this is raised to the power of three, plus three lots of our first term squared, multiplied by one lot of the second term, plus one to the one now, and then a squared and finally one lot of a to the power of three so we can tidy this up we have one plus a all cubed is the one the three times the a is going to be three a and then three times the one times the a squared be 3a squared and finally one lot of a cubed so just a cubed for question b we've got 1 minus 2x to a 5 so now we'll use the bottom row i'm not going to include raising 1 to a power because it's always 1 so we've got 1 plus 5 lots of 1 lot of negative 2 to the 1 plus 10 lots of negative 2x squared plus 10 lots of negative 2x to the 3 plus 5 lots of negative 2x to the 4 and then finally negative 2x to the 5 so we can tidy this up we've got 1 and then negative 2 times to 5 will make negative 10 with x. So negative 10x. Negative 2 squared is 4. And this 4 multiplied by 10 is 40. And that is x squared. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Times for 10 is negative 80. x cubed. Negative 2 to the 4 is 16. 16 times 5 is again 80, but now it's a positive 80, x to the 4, and then 32x to the power of 5. Okay, so finally for question C, we have 2 plus 3c to the power of 4. So we'll use our fifth row. We've got one lot of a first term, which is 2 to the power of 4, plus 4 lots of 2 cubed, and then 3c to the power of 1, plus 6 lots of 2 squared, multiplied by 3c also squared, plus 4 lots of 2 to the 1, and then 3c cubed, plus 1 lot of 3c to the power of 4. So we'll tidy this up. We've got 2 to the 4, which is 16. Our C term, we've got 2 cubed, which is 8. 8 times a 3 is 24. And then 24 times 4 is 96. So 96, see? So for our Y term, 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. So the 4 times the 9 is 36. And then 36 times 6 gives us... 216 c squared for our cube term 3 to the power of 3 is 27 27 times 2 is 54 and then 54 times 4 is again 216
3 cubed. And finally, 3 to the power of 4 is 81, so plus 81, 3 to the power of 4. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that useful. Thanks again and take care.